Well, good morning. Appreciate uh, you being here today. We've had a very great, uh, productive meeting today with uh, the experts as well as the CEO of the hospital in Sarasota Memorial. Uh, one of the things I'll just say, meeting with Doctors Hospital yesterday in the Sarasota Memorial, we have one of the, the best health care, some of the best health care, I think, in the country. I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of the hospitals and providers uh, in this region, so I feel very good about that. Uh, in terms of the virus, um, we have to do everything we can to take precaution and make sure we're doing a lot of the right things, but at the same time, it's somewhat like the flu. They can better explain that, but uh, it's somewhat like the flu, and there's maybe a, a few additional things you need to do. But I think in general, one of the things I want to get out especially with our health care community and the resources they have. Uh, it's uh, low risk. I think people need to understand that. But that being said, you need to take some precautions. We will have more cases, I'm sure, going forward in the future. Uh, I've had a lot of meetings with the Secretary of HHS last week. We had a three-hour hearing with him. I uh, had the opportunity, uh, some of you might know, uh, even with the Vice President. We spent quite a bit of time talking about the virus. Uh, and then meeting with uh, the experts, I, I shared with some of you yesterday, found out about this late Sunday night in terms of, of having a person in Mantee County as well as Hillsborough. Uh, and then I met you know, right away with uh, the hospital, uh, with CEO Bob there to make sure that what they're doing and you know, exactly where they're at. Uh, my goal for the last couple of days is to listen, uh, get the input from the experts, uh, which we have a lot of them here today, uh, and with the idea that we're gonna, I'm going to go back and do everything I can to make sure we get the resources that we need. We might not need all of it, but I, with talking with the leaders and others, we're looking probably somewhere between six and eight billion dollars that we should get past this week. Uh, I've got a dinner with some leaders tonight, in fact, and that's something we'll be pushing very aggressively. Uh, the takeaways for me is that we, I, that's why I appreciate all of you being here, is really we need to educate the public. We don't want to panic the public. We need to educate the public. Uh, and then the other big takeaway for me is that the testing now has to be done and sent up to Tampa, which they do a, a pretty good job. But, you know, if this thing gets to be more challenging, I think I'm going to push and recommend, and that's what they're recommending to me, uh, is that we do more testing maybe at Sarasota Memorial or at some of the hospitals locally. Because you can imagine if someone comes in, uh, they have symptoms like the flu, but it takes a couple, three, four days to get the results back, that's too long. So our goal is to work with them. They have some regulations they like to see us consider uh, modifying or changing. And then I guess the other big thing is to make sure that we have the resources. One of the nice things about this hospital especially, but all the hospitals, uh, many of them are well-resourced and have the capability financially and others to take this on right now. And that's why I think we're very blessed to have this kind of capability in our community. Not every community has this, uh, but with that, I'd like to turn, uh, turn it over to the CEO of Sarasota Memorial, very capable guy, someone I work uh, closely with on a lot of things. In fact, Sunday night, you know, I got, I got the call, was at the restaurant, or found out about it. First person I called was uh, David, CEO. David? Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. I, um, before, I, before I start, I just want to make a comment real quick about um, thanking uh, Congressman Buchanan and, and everything his office has done, uh, staying on top of this, making sure we have the resources, and really taking a, a great interest in, in this um, community issue and, and national issue. Uh, we are um, working, we have been working for weeks, if not months, to prepare for this. Uh, we have our teams in place, we've done our training, we have adequate supplies. Uh, we are screening patients um, each and every day as pa patients come in uh, for, for all kinds of respiratory illnesses, but certainly uh, coronavirus as well. Uh, we are, uh, we're on top of it, and we're trying to stay on top of it. I want to take a minute and just introduce the team that you see standing behind me. I'm going to start over here to the far left. Dr. Jack Rodman is the, uh, our Vice President and Chief Medical Officer of First Physicians Group which is a large primary multi-specialty care uh, group that, that works in Sarasota. Uh, next over is Dr. Jim Fiorica, who's the hospital's chief medical officer. He's gonna talk here in just a minute about uh, what's going on. 
to my right is Dr. Joe Seaman, who is a pulmonologist and over critical care, so he is uh, uh, seeing a whole lot of the respiratory diseases and treating them up on his floor. And in far, to my far right is Dr. Reuben Holland, who is the head of our medical, um, uh, our, our emergency room, and uh, obviously sees patients on the front line each and every day. So I thank you all for, for doing what you do every day in fighting this. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fiorica, and he's going to share with you some different things going on. Dr. Fiorica. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take a minute just to talk a little bit about this disease and, and what we're seeing and what we're doing uh, or what to, to help, help people in the community. Uh, as David mentioned, our infection prevention team and the hospital leaders are meeting frequently each day uh, to ensure that the emergency protocols are, and preparedness plans are up to date. Much of the work revolves around making sure we have sufficient supplies, staff, and space to safely care for these patients um, that may be suspected or infected with the COVID-19. While it is concerning because there's a lot of unknown about this virus, I did want to remind everyone that it, it is important to keep in mind that, that many colds and flus and other viruses circulate at this time of year. The best thing we can do as a community is to stay informed. We want to use common sense precautions uh, to safeguard against this and other viruses. Uh, one, we want to make sure, remind ourselves, wash our hands frequently, cough and sneeze um, in, on our sleeve or in an elbow, uh, use tissue, do not uh, cough into our hands, do not touch our face. We want to stay home if we're sick, do not return to work. Uh, school or social activities uh, until you've been fever free for 48 hours uh, off medication. If symptoms are severe or we have shortness of breath or underlying medical conditions, uh, we should contact uh, our, our family physician for guidance uh, to seek care um, uh, without exposing others. Uh, we can call ahead whenever is possible. I certainly encourage uh, people to call ahead whenever possible. If you're visiting Sarasota Memorial, our hotline number is 941-917-8799, or you can go to the smh.com website for further instructions. But I did want to bring my colleagues here uh, because we have been preparing for over a month uh, uh, and meet, as I said, daily, uh, many times a day as, as the protocols con are continuously updated. Uh, thank you very much and would be happy to answer questions that may come up. I have a question. Uh, here at Sarasota Memorial, I want to make sure no new patients, correct, that, are, that have coronavirus? We have no positive tests for coronavirus at this time. Do you have any that are, are waiting uh, on test results or anything like that right now? We, we've tested many people uh, with flu-like symptoms. Uh, we're just waiting for results to come back, so, but we have not had a positive, positive test to date. Anybody that's been quarantined as you wait for those tests or anything like that? Well, they are. The, you know, that's the protocol. Is is if you if you're suspicious with flu-like symptoms, uh, you have to follow the protocol, and that is to put them in in isolation uh, or exposures to to stay home for 14 days. Can you explain a little bit about how that isolation works? Uh, if they're here at the hospital, what does a day look like for someone who's waiting for those test results? So they are in a in a negative pressure room typically they the cultures are taken they they present the cultures are taken they're in a negative pressure room um the uh, nurses are, are have protective wear um and mass appropriate mass uh and follow the protocol to see them uh, while they're waiting for the results the treatment of the disease is actually supportive care in the vast majority of cases um, so it's really waiting this the symptoms in general, the, the disease lasts from three to five days in the majority of patients and is self-limited and supportive. And that's why we're encouraging people, if, if they think they have the flu, to stay home rather than you'd be more comfortable sitting at home than sitting in, a, in an isolation room, although we do the best we can at the time uh, unless, unless their condition worsens. How many students, I'm sorry, how many patients? Are you, how many are in isolation? Yeah, we're in isolation right now. That varies from, from time to time because they're not all because of, of, of uh, COVID testing. You know, we, we don't have a num I don't have a number of patients that are tested because they, it changes. Yesterday we had, we had no suspicious 
people sent out. So today we, we have uh, tests that are, that are being sent out. Can you talk a little bit about what the protocol is for protection of the doctors and nurses here who are caring for these patients? Let me, I'm gonna refer this. Dr. Seaman just went through the training and he can go through how he was trained because there is a very structured protocol for the staff for training uh, uh, on this. Thank you, Jim. Um, so the protocol um, is followed uh, basically as outlined by the CDC. Um, it's for droplet uh, and respiratory protocol. Um, so we have full gowns on, a uh, special mask to, to block any mucocutaneous areas that could uh, absorb the virus, and uh, a special mask um, that are able to filter out uh, any of those particles. Um, that's while in um, the audience with the patient. Um, they're obviously in a negative pressure room. So all of the doctors, the nurse practitioners, the PAs, uh, the nurses, the respiratory therapists are all trained um, in that protocol. You know, this might be a good question for you, Mr. Barringer. Sure. Uh, you guys are being very candid here today about the hospital protocols and about what you are doing to plan for this virus. Uh, why do you think it's important to be candid with the public going forward? Because we haven't seen that from a lot of so we have a history and a culture of transparency. Uh, we want to uh, get word out um, throughout the community and uh, about what we're doing. We don't, we're not looking to hide from anything. Uh, and we want people, we want the public to know what the best course is, what's going on. Uh, you heard uh, Dr. Fiorica say, um, sometimes the best course is to stay at home and, 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 and stay out of harm's way. And, and we want people to, to know what those things are. Mr. Barron, do you, you don't have specific numbers for how many samples have been taken from people who you suspect may or have this and sent out? I mean, uh, do you have any idea how many t tests have been done? How many came back without the without this disease? How many are still being processed? So let me let me kind of talk about the testing uh, process. So so when a patient so and this is prescribed by the CDC. So when a t patient comes in uh, with some type of res lower respiratory um, infection or, or perceived perfection, there is a number of tests that, that we go through and to start rooting, ruling out different things. So, so a lot of people have taken early tests and then you go to the next test and on. Finally, you may end up going to a test that, that's the coronavirus test, which is what Tampa is being currently done in Tampa. That changed um, uh, in the past I, I believe it was last Friday when the new rules came out and, and patients started being able to go to Tampa instead of going up to, to Atlanta uh, for those tests. Um, I don't know the test numbers that we have sent out there. We have no one who's presumptively positive for it or, or positive. Uh, but I will tell you, our goal is to test more and more frequently. We, we, and we talked about that earlier this morning with Congressman Buchanan and, and others at the state uh, level that we want to be able to test faster, test more frequently for coronavirus uh, specifically and have physicians be able to order those tests. So that's what we are encouraging uh, the next set of rules to, to do um, just to make sure that we have as many people uh, gone through the process as possible. How and are we going to get that accomplished? What do we have to do? I mean, they have rules now. What are you going to do to get this testing? Happen fast. I think our job is to continue to educate um, those at the national and the state and the, and the local levels uh, about the, what we see as the importance of that, and I, we're doing that right now. Is Sarasota Memorial capable of doing this testing? Have you got the resources here? Could you do the testing here? Uh, we would have to train our staff to do it, but we, we believe we, we could. Um, Dr. Seaman, I, I, I look to you to say that for sure. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the hospital um, the hospital certainly has the resources. The leadership uh, is fully uh, in support of this. Uh, as with all sort of medical testing, there's kits and devices that we would have to acquire. Um, but the, the regulatory portion of that is, is what Congressman Buchanan is going to help with. Uh, but we are fully uh, uh, capable of meeting those challenges. Are we capable with staff as well? Because we've heard that some physician assistants are over helping out at doctor's hospital. But if cases start to come here, will there be enough staff? Well, we, we, certainly, um, we certainly have a, a lot of patients here right now. We, we, you know, to, we, have a lot of, we do have staff that go back and forth between here and Doctors Hospital, but no, anyone, um, but here the, the, we do have protocols for how our staff are, are being seen and, and treat people here. We're hearing over and over again how this disease is very similar to the common flu. 
Can someone talk about why it's different? Why this is getting so much publicity? I, once again, Dr. Seaman, that's probably on you, or Jim. No, um, it, it's a respiratory illness. Um, it's a virus not unlike um, the flu in that it's in the big family of viruses. So um, we think um, that it's transmitted in a similar manner and the, the respiratory type symptoms are similar to those of the flu. Um, it seems that the course of the illness is three to five days, uh, which is similar to other sort of common cold viruses. Um, there's no doubt that the transmissibility is probably um, uh, easier than other viruses. Um, but um, right now, it's being what I'm saying is being based on loose reports and medical literature um, that's describing the uh, experience in China as well as sort of the evolving experience here in the U.S. So uh, I think that over the next several months, we're going to see more and more data come out so that we'll have a more refined and, and accurate statement. But right now, um, it seems that most of the people just have a common cold type virus, three to five days of rest, acetaminophen, fluids, um, and they're, they're back on their feet, so to speak. Dr. Seaman, the testing protocol changed on Friday uh, to expand to a greater universe. Can you say how that affected, has affected your, how you approach your patients? Yeah, um, as, as several of us have said, you know, this is a fluid situation, and we, uh, every day uh, we meet and are updated daily, uh, and sometimes multiple times a day, on how the evolution of the testing and the recommendations um, are flowing out of the CDC and other sort of thought-leading organizations in that regard. Um, we are a nimble organization, um, and we have strong leadership, both medically as well as uh, within the administration that helps sort of meet those challenges, but uh, we're refining our pathways and protocols um, to meet those changes. Have you what? personally sent any tests up to Tampa yet? Do you know how quick their turnaround is? Um, so as has been mentioned before, uh, we've sent testing. Uh, we don't have the testing result back, um, and we certainly don't have any test positives. How frustrating is that? Is it uh, we, we've uh, discussed that this morning um, because that is a, a pure bottleneck. Uh, not having that test to be able to rule that patient out, uh, remove them from the uh, negative pressure room so as to allocate the resources uh, in a different manner. Uh, it's very frustrating and I think that is something that's going to change in the next one or two weeks as new testing uh, methodologies and kits become available. How long ago did you send it out? What was that again? How long ago was the like, testing test? Uh, it's in, in the past 24 hours. Got it. And what? Uh, I'm not sure. On no, I I'm not sure how many we sent out, but but I want to say what I had mentioned a minute ago. Our goal is to, to test a lot of people and to test people frequently and and and, and to make sure we rule out um, uh, this virus. So. I think it's, I don't think that the, the, the important thing isn't to say how many tests we send because we'd like to do more. Uh, we'd like to, we'd like to do this quicker and faster and, um, and push the process along. And, and not to, I, I do want to make a comment to, to answer your question a second ago about Tampa. Uh, you know, this is, this, this just became their issue over the last 72 hours or so when, when the CDC changed that rule. So I think they're getting up to speed as well, and 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 I am sure that they're they're going to have rules and protocols change over the next 24, 48, 72 hours uh, as as things evolve and it stays fluid. Can you talk yeah, a little bit let, about let me just add one okay. thing, just in terms of, as uh, CEO mentioned, uh, in terms of testing, it, it appears to me we'll see what happens, but. The bottom line, we've got a million people just in the Sarasota Manatee area, especially when you take into account all the visitors. We need to have quicker, more capability locally. That's what I took clearly out of yesterday's meeting today, especially a uh, hospital like this. It's got 6,500, 7,000 employees. It has the resources. It has the capability. We need uh, quicker, more re reliable testing, and it needs to get done here. Tampa is good for Tampa. I used to live in Tampa, too. Uh, but we need quicker turnaround. It make a big difference. That was the big takeaway today. So I'm going to work with the governor and our people, HHS and others, uh, and make sure that we can try to get that sooner than later. Congressman, question. Oh, sorry, I'd also like to mention, remind everyone that the majority of these tests are going to come back negative. That's what we're expecting is the majority are going to be coming back negative. We just want to be cautious and, and run the test uh, to identify if there is a positive patient there. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with the state and county health departments and have you brought these concerns up to them? Are they being receptive? How often are you talking to them? 
Certainly, we've we've had conversations with the health department. We and, and they're very receptive. Uh, they're very supportive. Uh, the health department, specifically in Sarasota, is uh, a very well run, very well organized, and and um, a good group of people. Uh, we've also had conversations with the governor's office um, and and. Uh, to our local representatives and, and, and our senator here. And we are um, very much, we feel very supportive. This is a very fluid situation. It's one no one expected that we would be in a week ago. Uh, and, but I think everyone is working for the same uh, common good and, and, and the welfare of the communities. What do you want to convey to the public again? Somebody just has a common cold or just a fever so they're not overrunning the I think that, um, I tell you what, Dr. Robman, you're, you're, yeah. you're a primary yeah. care doctor, why don't you have a comment? Well, I, I think it's a great question. I mean, really, in some ways, this is about education, educating um, our community. And, um, you know, COVID-19 truly is a virus, not much different than a flu or our influenza, and it's supportive care. There's not a specific treatment. So we want to manage them at home. So when you call your uh, primary care offices, they're going to take the time and, and, and something we call triage, ask the questions, try to determine is this patient um, at a point that would need hospitalization or can we manage them at home? And if it's at home, it's really giving them the tools um, that of, of what supportive care is, Ma managing the fever, staying hydrated, nutritional status. Those are sort of the basics that we want to do over that three to five day illness. And then the secondary things, the simple, as we've talked earlier, the hygiene precautions, hand washing, uh, your hands to your eyes, nose, mouth, all those things. And then thirdly, the more global um, issue of, of staying at home, not going to public gatherings, um, and that sort of self-isolation um, that we talk about. But that's really what we want to do. We want to put the word out that this can be managed at home. We want to screen for those that need this high tertiary level of care. But ultimately, it's something that stay at home, the anxiety and the panic, we've got to sort of work to overcome. and. Uh, and that's really the goal. Doctor, how would you distinguish then if um, people are staying at home because uh, that's what you're encouraging them to do, knowing that we're yeah. testing them here? How do you know that they don't have coronavirus? Yeah, we, we don't know that. I mean, I think the key there is relationship, relationship with your doctor and your patient, knowing that we'll take a, a, you know, call us back if you're getting worse. And that's some of the education that needs to go out there. So if there is worsening respiratory status, shortness of breath, those seem to be the more telltale signs that maybe something is getting worse, falling into that 5% population. We want to know that, and then we want to get into the appropriate care here. What's the protocol for someone who doesn't have a primary care physician? Dr. Holland, do you want to um, what are you doing in the ER? We certainly have the emergency department available 24-7. We have six urgent care centers, and we have the physician hotline. So we certainly welcome patients to call if they have any questions, and we try to count on you guys to spread the word as well. What are the possible uh, consequences of not testing more and quicker? Um, I'll take a shot. <laughs> the consequences of not testing uh, more and quicker is that, is that you could have some type of a, of a patient who has not been identified and, and, uh, and unintendedly uh, uh, spreads, the, uh, spreads the virus. and, and uh, so and it, it affects more people in the community. So the, the quicker we can identify who has it, quarantine them, treat them, and and move on is the better. Congressman, so, yeah. question: um, You talked about how when you found out about this Sunday night, yeah, yet the test came back and and, and the state knew Saturday night. Um, specifically asking towards Sarasota County Health Department. I know we've had issues trying to get communication with them. I've talked with several businesses in the area who are also struggling to just get basic information on how to work with them. How can you help out in making sure that the health departments are working not only with the media, but with the businesses and the community to make sure they know what they're doing? It seems like when this initially first happened, everybody kind of got quiet, and now we're just starting to hear more and more about it. Yeah, that's a good question. I talked to the gentleman running the health department yesterday for probably half hour, 45 minutes. He was at the meeting before this meeting for an hour. Uh, seems very focused, very capable. Uh, my biggest thought is on this whole thing on testing. Uh, I want to make sure we get uh, quicker, faster, more reliable tests. Because for something to hang out there for three or four days is not a good thing, in my mind. And I think they've confirmed it with me. But we're involved. This is a team effort. All of us working together, 
It's a bipartisan effort. Uh, you'll see a big bipartisan vote this week, uh, especially the Florida delegation. And uh, so we're, we're, we're going to make sure they have the available funds. If they don't need it all, fine. But we're going to make sure. My concern with Tampa is if it got to another level uh, where they needed more capability, <clears throat> you know, uh, how, how quickly can they staff up? Then it bottlenecks everything here. I'd rather have the capability here and Tampa still have its capability. So I'm going to talk to uh, the governor and his people, as well as in Washington, and encourage that, because that's what they're asking me to do here. Right, and I understand that, but the hospital was talking about being transparent, and it just seems like the health department at times has not been doing that. Is there something They need to be, uh, uh, you know, I'll work on it, encourage, but there needs to be full transparency, no question in my mind. I don't know why it was delayed a day. I, as I mentioned to yesterday and today, you know, I found out at dinner 7.30 on uh, Sunday night and been busy ever since on this stuff. So the sooner the better, because it could make a difference with a person's life or something else. Congressman, do you know, did Doctors Hospital alert the Florida Department of Health or did they send out those letters before they went for those channels? And, you know, I don't know. I just found out uh, again Sunday night that then someone sent me a copy of a letter. Uh, multiple friends, some TV stations were a little bit concerned about whether it's legitimate or not. So that's just how it came about. And then I just had called uh, the CEO, and uh, I think late Sunday or early Monday morning, and we were in his office by 9.30 Monday morning. Is the proper protocol to let the Florida Department of Health know before you let patients and their families there? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's for them to decide the, the proper protocols. I'm not going to talk about that, but I, I do believe in full transparency, and I think I'm not sure why it got delayed, but I can tell you that we're all focused together now to make sure we... Uh, minimize the impact to this community and Florida in general and the country, of course. We have to wrap up now. Congressman had to leave at 1030. Yeah, I've actually got to get to Washington on the flight uh, to go after that. But I just want to thank you. I will emphasize, other than testing, is education. And she, you, offer, you asked a good question. We need to educate people. My sense, it's like a strand of the flu. Uh, you know, they're talking about washing your hands, but also don't touch your face. That's something a little bit new for me, but I guess because of the way this virus works, it's something we uh, got to be concerned about. But just kind of in closing, I, I just want to emphasize it is low risk. We are on top of it. We are working all together and uh, to minimize the impact to the state and to this region. Thank you. Hey. Can I make one, one final comment? Um, I just want to take a minute and, and recognize that we have 7,200 employees here that we'd like to, we owe our great thanks to that are coming in each and every day trying to make sure that, that our patients and our community is safe. We have 1,400 physicians that are here doing the same thing. You see some of their representatives here. We have 600 volunteers that come in here every day knowing that we have these things going on and, and, and none of this would work without all those people. Uh, for, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, Congressman Buchanan, I can't thank you and your staff enough for taking an interest in this and helping uh, us move along these issues and we thank every one of you for participating here Are today. Are you hopeful that you're going to be able to get through this? We know we'll get through this. We know we'll get through this. We've been through issues before. We're 95 year history. We know we'll get through it. Thank you very much.